I tested five of the most popular SSDs, so you don't have to. I have a couple of bonus options at the end too, so stick around for that. With so many SSD options available, it can be quite daunting to choose the best SSD for your needs. So I decided to try five of the most popular ones out there, these ones over here, and test them with a couple of realistic scenarios for you. And I tested all of them using different devices and different operating systems too. The results vary wildly between drives and between these devices too, but I laid them out nicely here so you can compare and contrast each of them. And I didn't just use benchmark testing tools, but I put each of them through some real world scenarios using larger files in both sequential and random read and write operations. None of these brands send me the drives by the way, and before we get into the drives themselves, here's a page that I put together for you so you can have a reference and see the tests that I've run. And don't worry, I will show this again as we go through each of them, but feel free to pause the video here and screenshot it. Starting with the SunDisk options here, the first one I've actually been using it for nearly two years now. is a testament of how durable these drives are these days. These are not ruggedized or anything, I mean there's a little bit of a rubber coating on one side of these ones. Before standard usage, just like, you know, chucking them in your bag or putting like a carabiner hook on them. These are all awesome. And look at this thing. I can't imagine a more beautiful thing. It's chrome! I actually do have a slightly ruggedized option here, but we'll cover that in a moment. This SanDisk Extreme I've got here is a two terabyte option and retails for $199 at the time of recording. There are always some great deals on them. If so, if you're watching this before Black Friday or Cyber Monday, definitely check for deals on them. I have links to all of them down in the description as well and in the pinned comment too. The SanDisk Extreme works really well with all my devices. One thing to note that is really interesting is that the M2 iPad Pro actually performed worse than the M1 iPad Pro on both read and write copies when it came to these two devices. Nothing to do with the drives themselves, of course, but it goes to show that the M2 chip set on the iPads may not be quite there yet. I also noticed that copying files from the Tab SA Ultra is way faster than all of the iPads that are tested here, which I thought was really interesting, but more about that on a separate video. This and this option here is probably my favorite when it comes to portability, but how well does it perform? And what is it good for? Off the bat, I don't actually like how it comes with a USB-A to USB-C cable, but it's not too much of an issue because I've got loads of USB-C to USB-C cables just lying around. It also doesn't seem to have an IP rating. It's mostly plastic, but for 146 bucks at the time of recording anyway, you can kind of forgive them for that. Just like the SanDisk Extreme, this works really well across all my devices and here's the performance details for you. And this is where tests like this, you know, more realistic tests, are more relevant and more important for me anyway. On paper, this drive has the same write speed as the SunDisk Extreme and scored very similarly on benchmarks, but in reality, it's actually two times or even three times slower in some of the tests that I've run. With the larger transfer, for example, it took 10 minutes to transfer 112 gig, which had me wondering, you know, given the advertised speed is the same on both, why is it twice as slow? And you know, maybe the read speeds have something to do with it. I'm not sure. As you can see on the screenshot here, the speeds never really went higher than 360 meg, even though they stayed up to 520 megs per second. And that's because they probably use benchmark data rather than real data transfer scenarios like I'm using here, which is probably just sequential writing reading. Which brings me to an important point. Always take these advertised speeds with a massive pinch of salt and just use them as guidance more than anything else. But am I writing this one off? Not really, because as a portable external SSD, it's doing a fantastic job. So if you're not regularly transferring large amounts of data each time, this is still a great option that will fit in your jeans pocket. Not just in any pocket, but it will fit inside your tiny pocket. Look, good isn't it? Coming up, I've got some bonus options for you for the fastest performance across all of them. But before we talk about these bad boys, here's the Samsung T5 and T7 SSDs. I have a few of these lying around and both the T5 and the T7 are still very, very popular when it comes to this sort of sub $200 price range. The T5 here is the cheaper option, but to be honest with you, it's getting quite outdated now and, and it shows. It will still work across all the devices, but you may have to format it to use between iOS and Android, at least that was my experience here, or between Mac and Windows. From a performance point of view, the T5 is very much on the slower side of things, but actually a bit faster than the SanDisk Portable here in some of the tests. Not faster than the SanDisk Extreme though. The T7 here though is a better recommendation if you're looking for a bit of a faster performance. And there's a newer model too, you may have noticed these grooves here. This is the T7 Shield, which is that ruggedized option that I mentioned earlier. This is much more durable because of that of course and supports up to three meters drop protection as well as an IP65 rating, giving you some dust and water resistance. But I can hear you asking, how well does it perform? It's at least twice as fast as some of the options that we looked at already, but is it faster than the Crucial X8 that I've got coming up? Hold on for that. Let's get into some of the data here first. It's curious again that the speed really varies between these devices 
quite wildly, right? The SanDisk was already faster on the Type SA Ultra that I've got here, but the T7 seems to be even faster on the Type SA Ultra when I compare that with all of the iPads that I've got. Like twice as fast when it comes to transferring from the, from the tablet right into the T7 Shield. So I'm really glad I included these Android and Apple devices here because the results are just kind of all over the place from, from drive to drive. Right, with that said, let's take a look at the Crucial X8. You know, Crucial have been in this game for a long time and are known in the computing world for their great memory cards too. You know, back in the day when it was possible to upgrade the internal memory on the MacBooks, I'm showing my age here, but yeah, back in the day, I bought several gigs of their stuff. So I thought I'd include some of the SSD here too. And here is the Crucial X8. At the time of recording, these are selling for $139, which is a pretty good deal if you can get it. And spoiler alert, it performed really, really well on my test, so definitely worth a check. I also like how it didn't really heat up at all. Maybe it's because, I don't know, it feels like aluminum. I'm not sure, but it feels quite cold to the touch. In comparison with the other options, it seems to dissipate heat a lot better, which is great for memory and performance in, in general. Maybe they've got some cooling pads internally, I don't know, but it really stays quite cool. It does support drops to 7.5 feet, which is about 2.3 meters, but they don't advertise any IP rating, so basically keep it dry and you'll be fine with it. Performance-wise, it is the best of the bunch so far. I say so far because there's some nuclear options here that we're gonna look at. It actually outperformed the SanDisk Extreme here in a couple of the tests that I run, particularly on a sustained transfer of over 100 gig in size, like by a mile. Really impressive performance. And talking about performance, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there are some bonus options here for you. And before I forget, YouTube can be really tricky for smaller channels like this, so one way to really support me is to hit that thumbs up if you like this video and take a look around after this video as well. If you like my stuff, it'll be awesome if you're subscribed. And this is gonna sound weird, don't buy my merch, it's rubbish anyway, I need to redesign it and make it a bit cooler. But supporting the channel with a sub is free and I'm here at least once a week with a down-to-earth tech video for you. Right, these options here, the nuclear options that I mentioned, these come up to more than $200 by the time you add more storage to it, but that largely depends on the storage size that you go for, the brand that you go with, the speed. The hubs and the enclosures themselves, they come under $200. But if you add a high-performance SSD into it, like my favorite here, the Sabrin cards, yeah, it can get quite expensive. That aside, I thought it would be good to include these options here in case you want to use these not just for storage or backups, but for actually high intensive work. That's how I use these, like using for graphic design, photo editing, video editing from the SSD itself, rather than clogging up your beloved laptop. Another reason you might want to consider these options is if you don't want to upgrade your internal storage when you're buying a new laptop, which can cost a lot of money, right? Especially if you, if you buy an Apple MacBook. Don't get me wrong, there are some really good benefits for having internal storage, like you know, having enough space for memory swap, for example, but using a high-performance external SSD is gonna be a lot cheaper in the long run and give you some flexibility as well. This here is the Acasis Hub. I absolutely love this thing. It doesn't just give you extra storage, but it allows you to swap it as well. It has all of these ports here, including HDMI, so you're getting quite a bit more with the solution. My favorite bit is that you can open it by hand, no tools required, it comes with a cooling pad as well, and there's your card, you can remove it, upgrade it if you want, really cool. I have reviewed this in a lot more detail, so I'll leave a link to you here. And I've also got these two other enclosures here, also from Acasis. Performance-wise, here they are side by side, so you can take a look for yourself. YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video over here and I put together a couple of playlists as well for you right here. Have a good one.